All right, it's Barry, and today on Grow It, I've got everything you need to know about using grow lights. Today's video is sponsored by Spider Farmer, the manufacture quality LED grow lights, tents, and everything else you need to set up an indoor growing area. There's loads of different options and specifications for every budget, and they've kindly sent over some of the latest gear for us to have a look at today, mainly the new Spider Farmer SE5000 LED grow light, which is an absolute beast of a light, and I'll be showing it in more detail and setting it up later on in the video. First off, I'll do a quick recap on photosynthesis and why plants need light, and then I'll go over the science behind grow lights and why we use them, how they work and then finally I'll unbox and set up the SE5000 and I've also got a tent to set it up in as well. During photosynthesis, a plant uses energy from the sun to convert carbon dioxide and water into glucose and oxygen. The light energy that plants require for the processes that facilitate this conversion are absorbed by the green pigment in the leaves called chlorophyll. When we look at the green leaves of a plant, like grass for example, we see the colour green because the plant doesn't really need to use the wavelength of light that creates the colour green, so it's just reflected. On the other hand, plants do like the wavelengths of light that cause us to see red and blue colours, so the leaves are happy to absorb the red and blue light, and this is why you'll notice that most artificial growing lights have a bit of a purple colour to them, a mixture of red and blue. Of course, it's perfectly fine to use white light, but it's less energy efficient to produce the extra spectra which are just lost, and this is why you'll notice that plants growing under red and blue grow lights are really dark looking, sometimes almost black, and that's just because the green light isn't there for them to reflect, and they're just absorbing and using all of the other light that's available. Basically speaking, a grow light is an electric light that we use to help plants grow, either as a supplement in addition to natural light, or to replace it entirely. Usually grow lights can mimic sunlight either by adjusting the lighting intensity or the colour to provide optimum lighting levels. This is also further controllable to adjust the photo period according to the growth stage of the plants being cultivated. So for example seedlings and young plants might be happier with a shorter light period of around 12 hours whereas mature fruiting plants would prefer a longer light period of say 16 hours just like the natural light in the summer. One of the most important measurements that you'll come across when buying lights is the light intensity, but that can be presented in a couple of different ways. And the main way that you'll find this information is presented are lumens, lux, spectrum, PAR or PAR, photons and micromoles. Lumens and lux aren't especially useful for what we're interested in, but basically lumens measure the light intensity. One lumen equals the light intensity of one candle. The big problem when using lumens is that they relate to human vision and not plant absorption, so they're a great indicator for buying torches and seeing in the dark, but not for photosynthesizing plants. For the same reason, lux aren't as useful for growing plants because they relate to lumens. Lux tell us how many lumens fall on each square meter and this does give you an indication of how intense the light is based on our vision, but again it doesn't give an indication to how much light is available to a plant. This is where things get a bit more interesting if you are a plant because next we've got the light spectrum. Light's made up of electromagnetic radiation in a variety of different wavelengths. These different wavelengths are what we interpret as different colours. The actual size of these waves of energy is measured in nanometers. The smaller the number, the smaller the wavelength. And the smaller the wavelength is, the more energy the wave has. Now human eyes have evolved to be sensitive to light wavelengths between around 400 and 700 nanometers. This is what we see when light is split by a prism or in a rainbow. The light is split into all of the different wavelengths and colors that we can see. We have violet at 380 to 450 nanometers, all the way through to the reds at 625 to 700 nanometers. And this means that red has the longer wavelength and less energy than violet light. This is something that you'll come across with things like sun creams that are designed to protect skin from higher energy UV light. Which brings me on to ultraviolet and infrared light. And these are at the respective ends of the light spectrum, but they are just outside the light that's visible to us. Plants use similar wavelengths for photosynthesis between 400 and 700 nanometers. And this is called PAR, which is short photosynthetically active radiation. The two main wavelengths used by plants that I mentioned earlier are violet and blue light at around 400 to 460 nanometers which encourages growth strong root growth and intense photosynthesis and red light from around 580 to 700 nanometers which is important for photosynthesis stem growth flowering fruit production and also chlorophyll production some growers prefer to use dual colored light throughout growth using both blue and red light all the time whereas some just use blue light at first for development and then switch to red for flowering 
and I'm going to be growing my lettuces in my setup and I want a rapid turnaround so I'll be needing plenty of blue and red light as well as a full light spectrum to make the process as quick as possible. Because we're looking at plants the best measure of light intensity is using photons rather than lux or lumens. A photon is a particle of light and it's the quantity of photons that makes your plant happy. It takes around 10 photons to bind a single CO2 molecule during photosynthesis and these are measured in micromoles. One micromole is 602 quadrillion photons and that definitely qualifies as loads. That's about as scientific as I'll get with it today but I just wanted to give a bit of a background into how these lights work and hopefully this will make it a bit easier to understand the figures that you're blasted with when you're looking at buying a grow light. I don't have any electricity in here so before we head off to the shed I'll leave a load of links in the description so that you can check out all the grow light tents and other equipment that spider farmer have got on offer and if this is something that you're thinking of trying out for yourself i'd really recommend having a look here i am in the shed and inside this rather large box is the new spider farmer se 5000 led grow lights i've cut the tape ready to go so let's have a look what we've got i'll just fold those in out the way and under this top piece of polystyrene we've got three LED bars which look absolutely packed with LEDs and we've got what looks like part of the frame. I'll just take this out first. And I can see why this box is so heavy, that weighs a ton. There's a nice bit of printed branding on there with the Spider Farmer logo. The orange logo looks really nice with the grey finish on the metal frame. Next I'll get these light bars out and they are really wedged into the box. There's little polystyrene blocks at each end, I'll just get those. There we go, and these feel really nice too. Metal frame at the back with heat dissipating grooves, and you can see the prongs for plugging into the frame on this end. I'll just get the others out of the way there. Take out the polystyrene, and we've got the same again. Another frame piece and three more light bars. I'll just quickly get these out of the box. This piece has all the wiring and sockets for the light bars to plug into and there's a really good quality cable on there as well. What else have we got under here? We've got an instruction book that looks decent enough and there's plenty of diagrams and instructions in there. I'll have a look at that in a sec before I try putting it together. There's another bag with some white things in and some small screws. Uh, well, there's a hole in it so hopefully everything's still in there. Another bag with a few bits in there for hanging the lights up and there's a cable in there as well. And then at the bottom we've got our driver and control unit. That is really hefty and it feels really solid. It's got a normal kettle lead attachment on this end and then the wire to attach the lights at the other. That's very nice and then just a standard UK kettle lead which looks a good length and then the box is empty. So the first thing I noticed when I started to set this up is that it's too big for in the shed. So I've got it outside on the grass while I put it all together. I've got these two frame pieces that I'll just stick roughly the right distance apart. and each light has a two pin plug that only fits into the wired side of the light. The other side just clips in and it's quite a fairly satisfying click as it goes in. And I'll just fit the other five bars now. There we go, and now I need the two top pieces that came with the frame, and these just snap onto the bottom piece, which presses the light bars into the sockets a little bit more. Here's the screws that came in the bag. We've got orange ones that are for the light frame, and the black ones which are for mounting the driver to the top of the light. There's an orange screw for each corner and you really need to press the top piece down to get the holes to line up on the two metal frame pieces, but once it's screwed in, it feels really solid. 
that's sorted and now I've got the four white bits which are just end caps to cover the screws on each corner. I would have liked these to have been silver to match the colour of the frame or even orange to match the logo but they fit nicely and they do tidy up the ends. Here's the driver and on the control panel we've got an on and off switch, two ports for daisy chaining more of these lights together with a single control driver and there's a dimmer which goes from 10 to 100. I don't have an external panel for this so I'm going to use the black screws to mount it to the top of the light. I put it so the controls will be at the front with the power wire at the back to make it easier to access when it's in the tent. The black screws are totally plastic which should stop the screws from damaging the light bars which is a great idea. These just screw straight on wherever you position it. There we go and as you can see this is absolutely massive and as you can see the LEDs are in blocks which will be white, red and blue and with this particular model the output between 380 nanometers and 730 nanometers which is a full spectrum and everything that plants need. There's a total of 2016 high quality Samsung LM301 diodes in the light bars which draw 480 watts with 1317.4 micromoles per second which is quite a lot for one of these. I've also got a big grow tent to put this in, Spider Farmer have sent a 2x4 tent which also weighs a ton, I'll just open this up. And we've got a cover, nice. Instructions, they look clear enough. Loads of poles and some straps and some little repair patches, that's nice as well. And now cuts the finally assembled tent because it's absolutely massive and I had to take it all apart again just to get it in the house. The instructions say to build the frame, lie it on its side and then fit the cover on which I'm sure will be a fine way to do it if you've got the space but I had to get inside the cover and build the frame from the inside just like building a camping tent and that was an easy enough way to do it. The cover is really good quality, it's black canvas with this lumpy reflective material inside. It's got this nice rubber logo stitched in and good heavy duty zips again with the rubber branding on it. Inside there's tons of space with loads of vents and windows, I think we've got 4 viewing windows and 8 vents in total and they've got nice drawstrings on to seal them up as well. So it's time to get the light hung up in the tent and the first thing I've noticed is that the light is too long to fit inside the tent but they also work diagonally which is fine for larger plants and for hydroponics so that isn't too much of an issue for me. It comes with two braided wire hangers that clip into the frame creating a loop to attach the pulley system and here's the pulley attachments, the mechanism at this end looks really nice. I'm not too sure about the clip and the knot at the other end um, and I don't know if that's going to be enough to support the weight of this light. I'll just make sure that it's all tightened up properly. This is all attached to the frame now and all that's left to do is to attach the pulley to the wire loop and start ratcheting up the light into place. I'm just going to do it gradually a bit at a time because I'm still worried about how heavy this light is. There we go, that's all in place now and it's actually quite sturdy so I'm going to be setting up a hydroponic system in the tent so it's perfectly fine to have it on a diagonal angle like this but if I was going to be using it for raising plants I'd definitely recommend a minimum floor size of 4x4 feet. Let's get this switched on and see how the camera handles it. It's not too bad actually, this is the minimum setting on 10%. I'll turn that up now to 100%. Oh wow, you won't be able to tell this because the camera's just going to adjust automatically but this is like sunlight on a bright day, I can't even look at it. So we're just looking at the light bars now that they're turned on, I've got this dimmed down back to 10% and you can see the groups of colour on the bars, there's warm white, cool white, there's red and blue to give a full spectrum of colour, I'm really impressed with how much light this is making. I've got the tent zipped up now with the light on full power and I just want to show you how bright this really is. I'm just going to open the window on the front. Oh wow. The light is so bright that you can see through my hand. You can see the bones in my fingers and you can see my knuckles illuminated. That is so bright. 
Well, there we go. That's all done. So thanks again to Spider Farmer for sending those bits over. They're absolutely fantastic. And in the next couple of weeks, I'll be setting up a new hydroponic system in there to really ramp up my lettuce production for the guinea pigs. So keep an eye out for that one as well. And don't forget to like this video and let me know in the comments if you've ever tried growing under lights and how that turned out. And I'll see you next time.